to the Acorn Wealth Corp Executive Summary. So um, let's have a quick look at the S&P 500 and where we're currently at. Of course, a critical day today with tension rising in Iraq has um, uh, put negative pressure on the S&P and indexes um, from our 1960, which is actually the 22.3% Fibonacci uh, extension. This is uh, rejected down off of that. And we're seeing this downward pressure selling off into today, uh, approaching the 1920 support, breaching the tr trend line support that previously we'd broken out of on June 5th. Uh, so as we come down, we're uh, quite likely, I think, to at least test the 1920 resistance and at the same time uh, find a little bit of support from the 20-day moving average. Now, uh, it's important to note uh, how the behavior of the S&P is acting because we've previously come uh, between the dates here of uh, March 12th through to March uh, May 21st, we've been in an oscillating period where the, uh, the indexes did not listen to the uh, moving averages, they didn't follow the kind of momentum type play behavior uh, until this day here. And this as you can see is where we stop brushing back and forth between the moving averages and actually start um, respecting them and was the main reason for this upward thrust of momentum that we've seen over the last several weeks. Now if you go and have a look at what's actually occurred over these last two days, we've actually broken down through those moving averages and the uh, cross that we've seen on the 5 and 9 would suggest downward momentum pressure. If we go into an hourly chart you're going to be able to see the same thing. You've got the, um, the negative directional movement, the um, selling pressure crossing over the buying pressure, and the ADX indicator on the hourly chart turning up, indicating a sell signal. Now, if we go then and apply the uh, moving averages uh, to that, we go and look at the 9 and 20, and throw them up on the chart, you'll see the same thing that we've noticed on the daily chart, that the in this entire rally that's been building over this last little while, if we zoom in here, you can see this entire time that this rally has been occurring, we've been respecting the 9 and 20 uh, period moving average throughout the um, period up until June 10th, really breaking down here at the beginning of Wednesday's market. And so as we zoom in on that, that should serve as a warning sign that a negative momentum or downward momentum system is actually coming into play. So we've got to be wary of that and we, uh, we look to uh, potential support points that we can spot on the, uh, the daily chart as to where we could have some support. Again, we we've, we've seem to have crossed through the, um, the trend line support and the next point will be this 1917 level, which was the open range support for June. Open range being the, the uh, low and the high set by the first trading day of the month, a key point to be aware of for any kind of trading activity. So whether we respect this and bounce off it, or whether we respect this and uh, hit this and actually break lower, is going to be a key indicator as to whether we're going to have um, a seller's market or a buyer's market through till next Friday being option expiration for the month, which is the next key open range to look for. So, here's a couple of um, ideas for your watch list for tomorrow that we've, uh, we came up with. Uh, seeing as we're approaching support, the key things that we want to look for for a, uh, a negative trade are stocks that have been kind of uh, acting on their own volition or um, beating to their own drum. And uh, that would be things like descending triangles, uh, stocks that have basically already broken support so that we can see that the stock has its own resistance system that's protecting it from any kind of rally in the market. And uh, the first thing that we actually uh, found was something that you're probably familiar with, which is Whirlpool. Uh, playing off the weakness in the residential sector, uh, Whirlpool has been uh, building uh, quite a lot of uh, selling for the last little while, ever since its breakdown here on May 13th. Now, if you look at what's um, been forming up now over the last couple of weeks, you can see that quite clearly we've been getting equal lows and lower highs, as well as a downward momentum system from the uh, 50, excuse me, from the 20-day moving average. And what happened today is we saw that selling pick up going from 884,000 shares traded yesterday to 1.34 million, so almost a 50% increase in selling uh, selling activity. 
And this could in fact be something that regardless of the market uh, could actually have its own pressure from the 20-day um, moving average, from the downward momentum, and now also from that resistance at 140. So Whirlpool could in fact um, offer itself as a, a potential candidate for a short here um, down towards these levels of um, uh, 135 to even as low as this kind of 127 level. Uh, I get the question that one would ask is, are we concerned about this sharp, uh, sharp rally here that we had before? And um, one thing that I look at when you see that is, well, was that really a rally of horizontal support or was it a trend line? And if you look at the system that this stock had in place, it seems to be quite clearly in a channel uh, throughout this period, and you can see the break of that channel then uh, respected that resistance from above, which means we can be fairly confident that this line was one of the predominant reasons, if not the predominant reason, that it actually rallied at these points, which means we don't become as concerned with possible um, uh, or some serious support at 135. It might pre present some momentary support, but we can be a little bit more confident that it'll simply bounce there, trend lower. So this is one that we liked as a potential short if the market um, does show weakness and uh, this stock gives us some insulation to that because it is already broken down versus the market approaching support. So there's WHR for you and if we have a quick look at the money flow you can see that that's actually now also breached new lows and uh, is in distribution territory uh, as well. Now what about the long side? What do we have there? Well. A lot of people have been talking about Twitter. Now, um, we, our natural instinct is to try and avoid the companies, the kind of the big board stocks, because they are still a little bit dangerous. But one noteworthy thing about uh, Twitter is that it really has had a, a tremendous sell-off from its highs here of 74.73 back in December to the lows of $30 we saw recently. And uh, one thing that you'll notice about Twitter is it, it certainly seems to have been under a significant downward pressure from, once again, the 9 and 20 day moving average. And uh, what we're seeing here is we're seeing the, the, the back of that downward trend slightly being broken. And uh, overall, if you look at this on a, a, a um, larger time frame, you consider kind of the, um, the kind of movement that we've had. You can see we're, we're ever so slightly been squeezing that range uh, in the, on the larger time scale. But more importantly, uh, I'm looking at the short term time scale. And if you look at this type of uh, action that we've seen of late, you'll notice that we actually see a uh, ascending triangle formation. So we've got the momentum starting to come in supporting from the moving averages. You've got the uh, equal highs and higher lows, the one test, two test, three test break. And uh, the key thing here is that we've now established a support level at this 35 zone, coupled with the support from the moving averages you can see just beneath. So it's a bit more of a punter's trade here, of course, with the uh, excitement from the market from the change in the uh, change in the board today. Um, but this is um, this is pressing up now against the moving average, and this is the one to beat. But it's got all this support from beneath, the horizontal support from beneath. So those of you who like to trade Twitter could be a potential um, uh, a potential exciting trade here. Um, looking at the long side. Now, where could we go? Of course, I'd be looking at this. Um, uh, I'd be looking at this level here of a, that about a 10% above where we're currently at, around this $40 to present some resistance. And higher still, if we continue through that, we could be looking uh, a little bit higher up into the 45 area. Now, if we look at the Fibonacci's just to confirm some of those areas. You can see that basically agrees. We're looking at this, uh, again, you see the 23.6 up here at 38.41. Let's just go back a little bit longer. Uh, see, so we need to make sure we get that properly there. Yeah, so you can see that the actual Fibonacci's are in, in agreement that those types of areas present the exact reversal points that we've just talked about when we go from the, um, the full leg of the journey. So both 40 and 45 um, offer some resistance areas, but again, that's a 10% move from where we're at, if not even more. So on a speculator stock, this does have momentum. It needs to beat the moving average. Uh, that is its main contender, but it does have some force beneath 
that's uh, helping it along. Of course, moving counter trend to the recent market drop. And if you look at the money flow here, you can see we've got some nice accumulation that's been going on ever since we bottomed out in May 7th. Another more speculative um, long for those of you chasing that side of the market is CARA Therapeutics. Now we talked about INFI last week and that had a uh, terrific rally of up to 18-20% since we called it on Thursday last week. Now. Um, INFI being in the th th um, uh, pharmaceuticals, this is also a uh, interesting stock in a similar space. And uh, what you might notice, it doesn't have a lot of history. It doesn't have a lot of volume either. It's only trading about half a million dollars worth of volume a day. But um, so unless you're buying half a million dollars worth of stock, you may want to avoid it. But for those of you who are plonking five thousand, ten thousand into a trade, um, you know, you decide if that's uh, reasonable enough for you by your own parameters. But you can see that this long-term downtrend uh, has actually just been broken in the last few days. It's, uh, it's broken that downtrend, we've broken this consolidation, and what you can see is that we've had a sharp tick up in the money flow. Money flow, of course, looking at uh, volume, how high the stock closes in the day, as well as um, new highs and new lows. And that's the true definition of an uptrend. And as you can see, it's breached that with this in, uh, increasing money flow. Uh, so when we're looking at money flow and what the smart money is doing, I thought it a uh, reasonably good idea to, of course, look at what the insiders were doing. Now, if you go into uh, um, the uh, Insider Cow, which is a site I like to use, you can look up CARA, and you'll notice that the only insider transaction is actually a, a fairly sizable purchase from the director, Mr. Martin Vogelbaum, on the uh, 5th of February at $11, putting close to $2.5 million into the company. Now, if we relate that to the chart, Mr. Martin Vogelbaum uh, bought at a great time because it uh, continued to rally almost 100% up to uh, 22 plus dollars uh, over the following weeks and that wasn't a reason to sell uh, he's still holding by the looks of the insider transaction so that was a um, a vote of confidence for the stocks appreciation in the future and you can see that potentially we're getting a another opportunity to take part in that so so that was also what kind of tweaked me and with this sharp rise in money flow, I wonder if something's building that uh, could be coming in the next few days. But certainly was on the speculative side for um, those looking at the therapeutics and pharmaceutical market, this, uh, this was quite interesting indeed, uh, albeit a low volume stock. That's where the high flyers always start. And finally, the last one um, on the uh, menu was ARTX. Now this one didn't have the same kind of exciting insider action. In fact, the CEO and director had been taking some opportunities to uh, sell off some positions over the last few months. But what you will notice is that this stock had a very sharp rally of uh, 4.59 million shares uh, traded today over 422,000. So a big percentage increase in the volume with a stock rallying of 13.38%. Now, if we have a look at the chart, you'll see that it also broke this consolidation, this uh, downward trend line. And uh, with a sharp tick in the Twix money flow, we also see that if we zoom into an hourly chart, you may notice a pattern that is often quite sought after, which is a potential flag. So um, we look at where we breached above, which was um, where we had the volume come in. We go in and apply the volume analysis and uh, put that in the place. Look at the volume, and what do you see? We have this massive increase to come in on this candle, which is where that horizontal resistance level was breached. So if we have a look at the flag formation here, and measure that, and then you look at the way that's forming up in this kind of perfect little downward flag consolidation channel, this could also be something interesting that... Um, uh, in two ways. Now you see the big uptick in the volume. That's a very positive sign in that final hour of the day. Um, now this could do one of two things if we're trading a flag. It could it could reject off that resistance and offer a potential buy point down here around the 470, 480 level. Um, it could also just simply smash through this tomorrow and continue upwards. And if it does, you know we could be looking at a rally up towards the 560 area from five, or 
a rally from the 470 area up to 460, uh, 560, which of course would be even more impressive. So um, those are some things to uh, throw in your watch list. Of course, much will depend on uh, where the whether the market respects that support in tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's market or not. But uh, these will be the ones we're watching, and hopefully that helps your trading. So this will be uh, Acorn out for tonight. We hope to see you in the future sessions. Take care and good evening.